Hi, Phil Schoenberg, Fast Pitch Power. Great question was asked on our website of somebody who uh, has a 15-year-old daughter playing at an elite level, Southern California, who was perplexed by the fact that she's about five foot ten and has a very athletic body and is very athletic herself and found that she was throwing the ball several miles an hour slower than some of the pitchers who she was coming up against who were three, four inches shorter than she was and not as athletic as she was and noticing at the same time that the delivery, the final delivery of the ball down their throw zone was different than what this particular girl was doing. Make a long story short, she stumbled onto our site and saw our posts on Forearm Fire. And in doing so, realized that Forearm Fire was the difference between what these other girls were doing and what this girl was doing. So to make a long story short, she has transitioned to Forearm Fire very successfully. And we're very happy that she's been able to do that. It's a process, but she's getting there because she's a very good athlete. And the question that was asked was not about forearm fire as it relates to a fastball, but how do you relate forearm fire to movement pitches, curveballs, screwballs, drops, rises, and so forth? That is an excellent question. It's complicated, but we're going to try to address it a little bit here so that there's a clearer understanding of the component of forearm fire that is consistent throughout any pitch that you throw. We liken it, and we have in the past, to hitting. I want to make sure that there are two components in my hitting a softball, a pitch ball, that are there every time. If I want to drive a ball over the center field fence, I need extension and acceleration. So when I'm at bat and I make contact with the ball, and you'll notice that the first thing that happens is I am pulling the knob of the bat toward the back of the hitting zone, my bat is still behind called bat lag. Then I have extension and acceleration down that hitting zone that enables me to drive the ball. Well, in pitching it's very similar. For forearm fire, if you think of my elbow as the hands on the bat, my elbow hands come to the back of the throw zone, my bat forearm lags behind, and I've got relaxed extension and acceleration that allows my arm to act like a whip. Okay, so how does this relate to movement pitches? The same thing is taking place when I'm throwing a movement pitch. Let's take a screwball, for example. I'm still going to have that extension and acceleration. Those are the two key components. Now, what changes in my movement pitch is the shape of my throw zone. For my fastball, I'm coming right at you. Here I am. I have a straight line to my target. I fire and drive. When I'm throwing a screwball, my stride is going to open up slightly to the power line. I'm going to be slightly to the left of the power line. And the shape of my throw zone is going to be the shape of a screwball. I'm going to come into the back of the throw zone the same way. Forearm leg. Here I am. And I'm going to have that same extension and acceleration, except the shape of my throw zone is going to determine the path of my hand. Curveball, very similar. Now I'm going to cross slightly over the power line to create good front side resistance. We have talked about this many times before. Again, my elbow comes to the back of the throw zone. I've got that forearm lag. And now I have extension and acceleration to my destination, which is my opposite hip. I'm creating this kind of spin on the ball because my fingers are outside the ball, but I still have that extension and that acceleration. Those are the components of forearm fire that are consistent throughout every pitch that you throw. Same thing for a drop ball. 
I'm going to get my body in position. I'm going to get my shoulders, my shoulder angle in the correct position to fire a drop ball. I'm going to come to the back of the throw zone, and I'm going to extend and accelerate to the front side, and I'm going to have a lot of bite on that drop ball. Same thing holds true for a rise ball. So, when we're talking about forearm fire, we are not going to change the elements of forearm fire because we're throwing a movement pitch as opposed to a fastball. Interestingly, the only pitch that you throw that will not employ forearm fire, but the extension of the hand down the throw zone will look the same and will go just as fast, is your off-speed pitch, your change-up. In that case, your hand is getting to the front or to the back of the throw zone first and firing through to the front side, depending upon what kind of change-up you're throwing, flip, push, shovel, it doesn't make a difference, but that's the change in, that, in the delivery of that particular pitch that sort of eliminates forearm fire from the equation. I hope this has been helpful and we want our pitchers who are employing forearm fire to be able to be successful not just in the delivery of a fastball but in all of their pitches without tipping them. And if you're consistent in your utilization of extension and acceleration, you will be able to accomplish that. Love to hear your comments. Looking forward to hearing from you. Talk to you next time.